guys it's a gorgeous morning today um in the north of england it's one of those days that you just feel like it's such a privilege to be able to see the blue skies and just outside taking advantage of the fact that the sun is out and it's not raining and just doing a little bit of tidying up around the garden and looking for some more spots of color in the garden and also getting out the wildlife camera. It's a cleaning day, hence I've got my cleaning attire on. So it's gonna be, I'm gonna try and whiz through the cleaning uh, so that I can spend a bit more time outside. But yeah, I'm just enjoying walking on the grass and just seeing the sun. Oh, it's fabulous. And I hope that you're having a fantastic day as well, wherever you are in the world. I've done with the house I want to go and plant out the onions into the ground so I've got another onion set that I need to also put out so because today is such a gorgeous morning and I'm hoping that well I'm not hoping I want to go and do some work outside in the garden I've initiated what I like to call super cleaning mode and basically super cleaning mode means I try and do four hours worth of work in two hours with a, maintaining about 75 percent of the standard so I'm not going to get the standard up to 100 percent mom clean um, mom level clean which is what my kids call it they call it mom level clean <laughs> when I do the cleaning um, but so what I do with that is it's also called the timer mode. And basically each room has been allocated a certain number of minutes and I have to do 75% of what needs to get done within those minutes. And it does mean that I can do the entire house within two hours, but there's no stopping, there's no break. And it's very intensive because I'm literally running around and running around. And by the end of it, I'm actually really quite sweaty and I need to have a shower. It's actually an intensive workout as well. So for instance, I'm here in the family bathroom. The family bathroom has for five minutes and it's hyper-focused five minutes. I don't even listen to an audio book or listen to music. It's literally hyper-focused thinking as soon as I've done that, I have to do this. Is there something that I can have soaking whilst I'm actually doing that other task very very hyper focused but it does mean that i get the job done it's not something that i like to do often i only save it for special occasions and given that we've had such gloomy weather for several days and this is the first opportunity that i've had to actually go into the garden and to plant uh, things out that i need to plant because i am doing a uh, super speed cleaning mode. I'm not going to be recording much video over the next two hours whilst I still get this done. So wish me luck guys. I will see you after two and a half hours because two hours to do the cleaning, another 10 minutes to have a shower and then do my hair and then uh, go outside. And uh, I'll show you a tour of my vegetable garden that's been put to winter rest. Also, I forgot to say that with the timer component of it, if I manage to finish the room in less than the allocated time, then the extra time gets added on to the next room and so forth. But if I say fail to finish within the five minutes that's been allocated or the 10 minutes or 12 minutes or whatever it is, then the deficit moves on to the next room, which means that I constantly have to be thinking what things I need to sacrifice or if there's anything that I can speed up on to either catch up on the time Time, or thinking about what's the extra thing that I'm going to do if I find myself with a little bit of extra time. The times that I've allocated are based on the number of years that I have been doing the cleaning and actually realizing what is the average amount minimum time that can be allocated to get the room to a uh, 
respectable state and to sort of reset it. So Mondays are all about resetting the house um, all the way through to Friday, to Sunday, which is a screen free day. And that's the day that the house gets the most trashed. And then Mondays when I reset it. So that's how I came up with those times and how I came up with this uh, sort of rules. But I try not to do this very often. At most, I will do it once a month because I only have four, an average of four or five cleaning days. Yeah. So those are the extra rules that I wanted to mention well it's two hours and 10 minutes later i managed to do it the whole house has been cleaned laundry is going but sadly the clouds have rolled in and the sun is gone <sighs> but still it's not going to stop me i'm going to go and see what i can do out there see if i can plant uh, some stuff out before that there's a dark gray cloud that's just looming and sweeping across. And if I can get some stuff done before it starts raining, that would be pretty awesome. So I'm going to have a shower now. I was supposed to have a shower now. I'm going to put the time towards the garden because I can have a shower after the garden. This area here, this is where the raspberry canes used to be, but we're taking out the raspberry cane and we're going to be putting onions on there. And that's because the raspberry canes, they've been in the same spot for almost six years. And with soft fruits like raspberries or strawberries, you need to move them every so often because otherwise they sort of suck all of the nutrients dry. So that's the rotation that we're doing. Plus the other thing is, the red raspberries that we had they didn't have a really great flavor and i've selected a different type of white raspberry that just has a delicious peachiness to it which is absolutely gorgeous and that's going to arrive in february for us to plant in winter but it's going to be planted over by the trellis i'll show you where the trellis is so behind me here you can see there's a trellis that trellis is south facing which means it gets all the light all day long and when you have raspberries or any berries really you want them to get as much sunlight as possible so that's going to be where the raspberries are going to be moved to so right now i'm just going to do final bit of clearing and then i'm going to pop the onions down i have to put a netting over them to protect them from pigeons and squirrels and rats and things like that um, and give them a good start in life but it is a glorious, it's a glorious day. It's uh, just after noon, so the sun is right directly above me. The birds are out in full swing. I've seen so many blue tits and so many red caps. It's, it's just beautiful and stunning. There's just something about blue skies and a gentle breeze. 
and just being out on the land and planting things. I know you're supposed to be wearing gloves and stuff, but for me, there's nothing quite like connecting with Mother Earth. You know, when I'm planting things out, it feels very unnatural for me to not be connecting my hands, my energy with the seeds or the bulbs or the plants that I am putting into the ground. I feel like there's a wonderful connection there. And whenever I'm planting stuff, I always do a small great gratitude ritual where I'm kind of like, you know, thank you little seedling, you're going to grow so that I can get some food or I'm going to get uh, beauty through the flowers that you're going to make. You know, and, and I just sort of like share my gratitude for that because it's all part of, we're all part of the same cycle of life, aren't we? Um, yeah, anyway, enough about that. Let's get on with this. It's a gorgeous, gorgeous day. I love it. Look at that sky. Those skies.
Okay, not bad for a Monday. So these are the shallots, which are smaller, pack a greater punch when you're cooking them and when you use them for salads, they smell and taste divine. And these ones are Japanese overwintering onions. They will grow into these really nice big bulbs. This here is my kale garden. So underneath, that's my kale. There, that's how I supply my keto vegetables. And I've grown a variety called Cavolo Nero, which is just absolutely delicious. It's this dark green one, super healthy, packed full of iron. And over there, these are Brussels sprouts. They're supposed to get ready in time for Christmas to be part of the Christmas dinner, but I don't know about you, but I'm not seeing any signs of sprouts there. <laughs> um, yeah. I have to keep it under this agro mesh to protect it from number one butterflies. Pretty they are, yes, absolutely beautiful. However, their little eggs at first turn into caterpillars and caterpillars will completely decimate an entire brassica crop. So we have to protect this from butterflies being able to lay their eggs on it and also to protect it from the pigeons and the birds. Because if I don't do that, this is what happens to them. So this is cabbage, um, I think this one's called greyhound, yeah. This is supposed to be my greyhound cabbage, but we didn't put up the defenses in, in time. And, you know, I've just accepted that this is for the birds. I can see a little bit of a Brussels sprout there. It's a teeny tiny one, but it is there. <laughs> this is my new batch of curly leaf parsley that I'm growing from seed. I started the seed for this in February of this year and it's doing quite well. So this defense for the kale, my kids built that to protect the kale. So proud of it and it's done the job actually so you know it doesn't look perfect but it gets the job done. We put a trellis over here about six months ago and I've got a rose bush that I planted. It's a beautiful pink climbing rose over there. And the idea is that it will climb and grow over. And then that will create like a, an entrance to a secret garden, which is full of flowers. So it will take a couple of years to get there. Okay, I'm just returning everything now to its place. I think I may have time. To have a shower before I pick the kids up <laughs> definitely needed but I want to show you one of my favorite garden tools and it's my favorite because it's a fisca and you know how much I love it when my twin loves of sewing and gardening intersect with each other so imagine my joy when I found out that uh, fiskers they also make garden succotors but this is not my favorite one. I'll show you which one's my favorite one. Uh, just putting things away. Because much like with your sewing room, you put things away when you're done with it. Same with gardening. I'm absolutely parched. It was quite windy. Right, let me get this one and show it to you. Okay, so when I'm gardening, I like to jewel wield. All right, I've got a teeny tiny little hole. It's very useful for digging around. And this is my favorite. It's a Fiskars. And it's a double-sided gardening tool. It's got like the whole spade on the one side and it's got the garden fork on the other side. It's white and it's orange. So it's called the Fiskars Cultivator Hoe. And it's made of fiberglass. So it is super light, but it does the job. So I, just, I, I love this. Sometimes if it, even if I just want to feel like I've done something in the garden, I'll just walk around holding this. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, this is my favorite one because it's a Fiskars and my favorite uh, dressmaking scissors is also a Fiskars. Right, I'm off now guys. May the gardening always be with you. May the gardening odds always be in your favor. Ha <laughs> ha.
wasn't too bad actually. I have a full 35 minutes before I have to go pick up the kids. So that's a decent amount of time for me to uh, do a thorough washing of my hands. But I don't mind this kind of um, hands, these kinds of dirty hands. I, I love it. I'm gonna use a nail brush. Uh, but I just wanted to explain my love of gardening, uh, basically. I, I learned how to garden uh, from the most amazing gardener I know, my mother. She's got, a, she's got green fingers and she could grow anything. Like we grew up in a house that was full of house plants and she would just take a cutting um, if we were out and about and she might ask, you know, a friend for just a cutting of something and she could just make it flourish. And we grew a lot of the vegetables that we ate were homegrown. So that was something that I just grew up with. And my mom would let me learn about gardening because I was interested in it from an early age. There was just something fascinating to me about this idea of a, a teeny tiny little seed. You put it into the ground, pour some water on it. And from that seed, you could get something as big as an oak tree or an apple tree. It just it fascinated me um and to me that was like the most elemental magic um of all that you that happens in nature and so she taught me how to garden and the best thing about it was that she never treated me like i was a little kid she just taught me how it was it wasn't like i was uh given like a teeny tiny little gardening area with easy to grow plants or anything like that it was just if i had an interest in um growing tomatoes okay let's grow tomatoes together so from that that's just how i learned um how to garden and i can't ever remember a time where i didn't know how to grow things and it's something that i've carried through um in my life we used to have an allotment which for those of you that don't know in that are not in england an allotment is a piece of land that you can rent from your local council or local government and it's land that you can grow vegetables on and fruit on but the problem was that you have to, the problem with, for us was that you had to drive to go there, which meant that all of, most of our weekends were taken up with going to the allotment, which pack up everybody and the kids to go there, which was well and fine because the old house that we lived in before we moved here, it had uh, a small garden, so we couldn't feasibly grow any vegetables there. But last year, we basically realized that We've got a garden here and we can turn that into our own uh, garden. And that's what we've been doing. I'm just trying to get the dirt out of my nails. Um, and that's what we've been doing. And honestly, I kind of wish we'd made that decision a lot earlier. It is so nice in the evening. Maybe I'm feeling frazzled or I'm frustrated because um, I have a, a bad habit of being a little bit too hard on myself. Um, I'll, I'll have these ideas that I should get this done and this done and, da -da 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 and all that because I'm into efficiency and effectiveness. Um, but I'm still learning very much how to be kind to myself and not to be too hard on myself. But sometimes I'll drop the ball and I'll get frazzled. And it's just really nice to be able to go walk in the vegetable garden, do a little bit of weeding, you know, just tend to some of the vegetables and it feels good. Or I'll notice a few of the rhubarb leaves have fallen over in the wind and I'll pick those and we'll make a, a rhubarb custard, uh, sorry, rhubarb crumble with custard that the kids like. So yeah, and it's also been really good uh, for the kids as well because um, the children have a very good working knowledge of where healthy food comes from. They understand about organic um, produce and the use of pesticides and things like that and, and GMOs. And they understand why our homegrown carrots look nothing like the carrots that you buy in a supermarket because uh, it's not the same type um, of breed. 
and then like and then like growing so that's something else that i've been trying to impart on them just basically following the same model that my mom taught me which is you know we just do the gardening together we grow the potatoes together although our potato harvest for the last couple of years have been lackluster but if there's one thing that gardening has taught me is that it teaches you to be incredibly patient and optimistic because you don't, there's no such thing as instant gratification gardening. So in sewing, you get instant gratification sewing, right? Where you can just uh, buy a PDF pattern, download it, and you have it sewn uh, quickly and all that. But with gardening, it doesn't work out like that. You know, you, you, you have to, you are forced to have a long-term, a mid-term perspective, and you are forced to acknowledge that any undertaking very rarely involves you just uh, purchasing the stuff and placing it where you want to place it. You, you have to work, you have to tend it, you have to look after it, you have to put in effort into it. And sometimes even when you've done your very best, the weather just craps on everything and you get potato blight and it's outside your control. But does that mean that you're going to give up planting potatoes next year because you had blight this year or because um, there was too much rain and it got soggy or there was a slug infestation or <laughs> some nasty little animal dug up your potatoes and ate through them? No, you still get that catalog and you still choose different varieties of potatoes and you, you know, you maintain that optimism and it teaches you that there are things that are outside your control that you can't do anything about. And there are things that are within your control that you can do something about. And I've always thought that that was a very valuable lesson that I've learned from gardening. And because of this long-term perspective that gardening has, I think it's one of the reasons why I don't do very well with slow sewing um, because I have something in my life that already requires me to have a long-term perspective and especially with the orchards and trees and things like that and rose bushes I don't expect to see the fruits of my imagination until at least three or four years down the line we have a cherry tree that we planted about five years ago and it's only beginning to get to the point where I had envisioned it when we bought it as a sapling and planted it and, you know, I'm kind of hoping that 2021 is the year that we're going to have the typical cherry blossom tree with, you know, the round top and the stem because we've been pruning it over the last five years to try and get this particular shape. And we might just get it five years later. So because I have this thing in my life already, which requires me to be slow, methodical, well thought out, mindful, I can't seem to transfer that to sewing. It's very hard for me to do that um, with sewing. But hey, who knows? My mom always told me never say never. Maybe at some point in the future, I will learn um, how to do that. But yeah, anyway, I think my hands are clean now. <laughs> Thank you for hanging out with me. I think I'm gonna call it a day today uh dinner is just going to be leftovers uh, if you didn't notice i did make a huge amount of meatballs yesterday and that's because we don't have them the next day and the kids will just have them with mashed potatoes and stuff like that um but yeah until i see you tomorrow thank you so much oh water is running probably not a good idea right Thank you so much for hanging out with me today until I see you tomorrow where I will have a made up face and I'll be dressed up. I'm going to quickly hop into the shower now and get this edited and out before my usual time and we'll be back to a normal schedule tomorrow. Oh, another thing, guys. I got some fabric in the mail. <laughs> sure. And it's in a pink bag in a pink bag and i'll show it to you guys tomorrow so be sure to stay tuned um yeah bye